Hi guys, in this video I am going to do a very simple example of simple regression and I'm going to keep it short and I'm going to do subsequent videos where I go into more detail of the output. So for this uh, example we're going to be using the data analysis package which is an add-in in Excel. If you don't know how to add, install add-ins, uh, watch my video on installing add-ins uh, through my channel. Okay. That's uh, R.D. Jalair, or go to Jalair Academy, the channel, and you can see how to install add-ins. I'll show you exactly step by step. Okay, and when you're done, come back, and we'll do. We're going to do continue here with simple linear regression. So here I have my Y, and here I have my X. My Y is oftentimes called the response variable, a dependent variable, and X is often kind of called a de independent variable, a covariate, and so forth. Explanatory variable, okay? So these are just other names for y and x. Basically, we want to see whether x can help, there's a linear relationship between x and y such that x can predict y or explain y. Okay, so we go over to the data tab, we go over to data analysis and we scroll down to regression. Hit OK. And first thing is we input the Y range. I take the header and then input the X range. Again, taking in the header. Then I click labels, which means I've taken in the headers. So I'm indicating don't use the Y and the X letters in calculation, which would make no sense. Then there's a bunch of extra stuff you can check and uncheck or leave out. We're going to keep uh, with just the bare minimum like I said in this video and in subsequent videos go into more detail. I'm going to choose the output range to be on this same sheet and I'm just going to select the top left cell where the output is going to be placed. Hit OK and we're done. And there we go, summary output. We'll just adjust the column widths a little so everything is legible and let's go through some of this uh, output briefly so the multiple R this is a measure of how well these two variables are correlated with each other same thing with R square which is the coefficient of determination the adjusted R square adjusts R, the coefficient of determination based on the number of covariates the more covariates, the more uh, the negative impact on R square. Standard error of the model, the number of observations, we had 13 observations. And now we can go through the ANOVA table. So we see our regression degrees of freedom is given here. The sum of squares from regression, the mean square from regression, then the residuals, we have 11 degrees of freedom because we have uh, we take we have the y-intercept and we also have a one explanatory variable so we subtract two from our number of observations which is 13 the sum of squares from regression the mean squares from regression then we also have the total sum of squares and the t sum of uh, degrees of freedom and the t total sum of squares important thing here is the F statistic this statistic and its associated p-value let us know if this model uh, is worth even looking at in other words if the p-value is not significant then we are accepting the null hypothesis that the the uh, coefficients of the explanatory variable in other words x here are not uh, significantly different than zero in other words x doesn't do anything to explain why. In my case, because I just chose random numbers here to do this example, this p-value is not significant. So this model is really not a good model. Okay, X does not explain Y very well uh, linearly. So let's move on to another important thing, actually probably the most important, our equation. Our equation for our regression function. And these are the coefficients. So even though I said this model is really worthless, we're still going forward for an edification and a learning process. 
we would write y hat, hat meaning uh, predicted y hat, and y is from this y. So predicted y equals the intercept 28.033 minus, because this is minus, this sign, the sign for this coefficient is minus, 0 0.2139 times x. This is our regression equation. So y hat equals the intercept coefficient plus, even though it's negative, the beta 1 coefficient times the explanatory variable. And then we go over, we get a standard error for the, each coefficient. We get a t stat, we get a p value. This p, basically the hypothesis test that's going on here is whether the, ba the coefficient is significantly different than zero. Now for the intercept, that uh, has little meaning, but for the uh, coefficient of the covariate or the independent variable, if this is not significantly different than zero, then essentially it's saying what we the same thing we said here that this x does not really explain our y very well. So here we see this is not significant. Okay, this is just a very quick run through of, of all these uh, of all this output. I'm going to do uh, more videos on going through actual calculation of each one of these and more about the uh, uh, hypothesis test that's actually happening here. I'll state it more explicitly. Okay, for now just know that these hypotheses are that these betas, so the null hypothesis here is that beta i is equal to zero. And the null hypothesis here is that beta 1, beta 0, meaning the intercept, is equal to beta 1, which is this one, the one associated with the covariate, which is equal to 0. And since we don't reject HO, then that's what we're saying. We're saying that there, this model is useless. And it's reconfirmed here. Finally, they give us the 95% confidence interval for both the intercept and the coefficient for the explanatory variable, and they give it to us twice. And I don't know why uh, it does that. Uh, it might be a little glitch in uh, the add-in. But important thing to realize here is that if this p-value here is not significant, meaning it's greater than our alpha, then it will not, then zero will be included in the 95%, in the one minus alpha, in this case alpha is 0.05 confidence interval. So look at this, negative 0.0983 to positive 0.056. Zero is between these two numbers. And that's another way of saying the same thing as the alpha is not that uh, p-value is not significant, okay? Zero being in the 95% confidence interval is the same thing as saying we do not reject at alpha equals 0.05, okay? So this was just a brief run through. This model unfortunately was not a real good explanation of the y variable, but still this happens and 50% of the time roughly. So it's important to know where to look in this output that uh, the data analysis package gives you and what key information you could get out of it. Okay? So please be sure to check out my other Excel, Access, PowerPoint, statistics, math, and other computer tricks tutorial videos on my channel. Subscribe while you're there, comment, and please click on our sponsor's ads. That's what keeps these videos coming to you for free. Until next time, have a great day.